Good afternoon, good evening, good morning from wherever you are joining us. My name is Ann Connors. I'm part of the admissions team. Welcome again. I am thrilled to introduce our panelists today. We are waiting for one more panelist to join who's coming from a work meeting, um, but we will get started due to the interest of time. So I'm going to start with our introduction of our panelists to talk about healthcare at Sloan and at MIT. I'm thrilled to do this event as we um, generally don't focus on this topic. And I know there's a lot of interest and we have some phenomenal programming of healthcare at Sloan and MIT. So I'm gonna start with Pooja. Why don't you start and maybe tell us prior to Sloan what you did and, um, and then kind of where you are at Sloan, activities you're involved in and where you are now. Great, thanks. Hi everyone, it's really nice to be here. Excited to share about my experiences with you all. I'm Pooja, um, second year MBA student here at Sloan. I have a background in healthcare. I'm an ER physician by training. And before Sloan, I was working at a couple different hospitals outside of Boston. And uh, currently I am serving as one of the co-presidents along with Marissa of the healthcare club. So happy to share about my experiences with that. I'm interning this summer at Bowie Health, which is a digital health startup in the Boston area. And it's been an amazing experience so far. My future career goals, still working on that right now, but ultimately want to help to create change in healthcare. And I'm really excited to have the Sloan background to, to launch me in that direction. Great, Marissa. Hi everyone, um, Marissa, also a co-president with Pooja and the Healthcare Club. Uh, my background is actually in communications and science history. So I uh, was a journalist for a little while in writing and worked in, um, academic medicine at the University of Washington and came to Sloan to take a deeper look at healthcare economics and the incentives both in the payer provider side and also in drug development. This summer I am working at Vertex here in Boston but virtually um, and hoping to spend some time learning more about the incentives and the coursework in the fall and um, I'm also a co-director of Camp Sloan so hopefully one of these days we'll get to go outdoors and hiking again. Great, thank you, Melissa. Um, hi everyone, my name is Melissa Lawton. Um, I am the token non-healthcare person in the group. Um, so my background is in finance. I have zero experience in healthcare, zero experience in, fin um, in science at all. I actually got a C in high school biology, don't tell anyone. Um, and I really came too slow to transition into healthcare. Um, my focus really while I've been here has been on the entrepreneurial side of healthcare, uh, which is something, entrepreneurship is something that's important to Sloan. 
Um, so I've been focused more on that startup side, looking at different companies there. There is also a specialized mental health group that's set up between Sloan and HBS students of students who really care about mental health. So that's been something that I've been involved in and it's been really great. Um, right now, um, I'm interning at a biotech company here in Cambridge. Um, I'm working in a business development role. It's been really, really fantastic. Um, it is a remote internship, but I am actually starting to rotate days in the office pretty soon, which is uh, exciting. Um, post MBA, I think I'm still deciding. I think for me, it will be a toss up between passion, location and stability. Um, so maybe I will go more towards my passion of mental health, perhaps focusing on digital therapeutics but equally I could end up in biotech as well. Great, welcome. Susie. Hi, I'm Susie. Um, I'm an LGO class of 2021 and although my undergraduate degree was in biochemistry, I actually worked as a um, material science um, or material scientist in R&D for several years before working as a process engineer in the automotive industry. So kind of got a little bit um, away from the biochemistry background in my career path. And I came back to Sloan to kind of transition um, into healthcare or, or I guess more med tech or biotech. Um, and this summer, uh, my internship is with Johnson & Johnson working in digital strategy to implement um, a machine learning algorithm to help with um, predictive or to help implement predictive quality control. Um, and I'm also doing some consulting work with a startup uh, in the Boston area that's um, a gene editing companion diagnostic that I actually got linked up with through my coursework at MIT. So I'll be doing some legal and market analysis and benchmarking there. Um, and kind of similar to Melissa, I feel like I'm not ready to decide what I want to do after school. Definitely we'll be looking at, I guess, stability, career growth opportunities um, in terms of what to pursue next. And I guess how much funding this startup ends up getting um, as we move forward. Great, excellent. And we'll wait for Steve. And when he jumps on, we can have him introduce himself. He is uh, full-time working. He graduated at JP Morgan in the healthcare space. So uh, hopefully he can join on soon. So we had a bunch of pre-submitted um, questions that we're gonna kind of go through to drive the conversation, but feel free to use the Q&A button to ask questions. We will not be using the chat. You can find the Q&A at the top or bottom of your screen. And you can direct questions directly to our panelists or just in general, and we'll try to get through as many as possible. Um, for our panelists, just raise your hand um, if you'd like to answer the question and we will do our best to get through as much as possible. But I would love to hear from the panelists on why you decided Sloan. What was it about Sloan and the healthcare programs at Sloan that made you decide um, to start your MBA here? Marissa. Sure. Um, for me, it was it was the flexibility and the combination of expertise here. Um, I was really excited about the the action learning, and you know, I know that's evolving in the world that we're living in today. Um, but there's a lot of opportunity to take the individual projects that you're assigned from classes and, and spin them in an industry focus the way you want to. For example, rising first years all do an organizational processes class where they get to pick a company with their core team and observe um, an organizational change within that company. And my team looked at um, a local healthcare um, group called Partners, which is a big hospital system here in Boston. And so, you know, because we're MIT students and Sloan has this unique um, reputation, they, were, they welcomed us in and we got to observe some of their work and I could, you know, use the healthcare lens with the, the MIT, the way they structure their action learning. So I think that was a big part for me. Great. And Melissa? Sure. Um, so for me, I think Boston location was a critical factor. Um, you know, I am married, I have got pets, I didn't really want to be jetting around the country to do an internship in other locations. Little did I know that COVID would, you know, disrupt all of that. So having a school in a location where there is a 
thriving uh, work environment was important for me. I really liked the entrepreneurial focus of Sloan. That was incredibly important. And to combine that with healthcare and in this you know, space of Cambridge and Boston has been really great. And I think additionally, MIT has a reputation as a technical school and therefore as someone who has pretty much an only business background, people look at me as an MBA uh, student at MIT and says, well, great, you know, that's a great school, you know, they do technical things there, she must know a bit about that. And I think that's been a big help in healthcare recruiting. Excellent, thank you. And hi, Steve. Sorry, we um, had some d trouble on my end getting you up here, so welcome. So Steve, do you just wanna introduce yourself, say uh, what you did at Sloan, maybe prior to Sloan and what you're doing now? Sure. Um, so I'm Steve Trickham. Um, I just graduated from Sloan. Uh, I majored in computer science uh, with a minor in business undergrad uh, and work as a management consultant um, afterwards for different clients, including uh, Novartis, the Ministry of Health in France, and I came to Sloan to get a better understanding of the healthcare ecosystem in the US and also do a deep dive into uh, healthcare finance. Um, I work for a startup last year, uh, if anyone's interested in that, a healthcare startup, and I'm currently working uh, for JP Morgan doing healthcare investment banking. Great, thank you, Steve. So um, another question that we got is about the healthcare club and the healthcare certificate. Could some of you touch upon the opportunities the healthcare club provides you all in terms of community building, um, you know, conferences, courses, and also potential recruiting opportunities? I know a couple of you are part of the healthcare club. Maybe you can talk a little bit about it. Sure, I can take that one. So the Healthcare Club is a really great opportunity uh, to get involved in healthcare. Yeah, um, I, I'm biased because uh, I'm one of the presidents, but uh, I do think it's it's a unique opportunity to actually combine a lot of different interests of, of students. So uh, I, I personally think that the Healthcare Club is one of the most diverse clubs on campus. Healthcare combines a lot of different industries. There's pharmaceuticals, biotech, entrepreneurship, payer provider, uh, pharmaceuticals, consulting. So it's a huge industry and it's really interesting to gather all of the students together in one place to really discuss everyone's interests. Uh, and so I think the question was specifically around activities with the healthcare club as well as recruiting opportunities. And uh, we do our best to create as many opportunities for networking as we can within the healthcare club, but also with alum in the area. And that's one of the beauties of being located right in Cambridge. We're very close to every single biotech pharmaceutical company uh, in the area. And so uh, our alum take uh, are very active participants in our network. And um, we do provide recruiting events and networking opportunities beyond just Sloan. And I think it's a really exciting place to gather everyone's interests together. Pooja, can you expand on that or maybe someone else as well about how you actually engage with the biotech scene? You know, we talk about uh, Kendall Square being a hub of biotechs. How, um, how do we go about interacting and maybe getting jobs or research or, you know, what's the flow like? Um, so one of the biggest ways that we do that is through events and we host different um, happy hours, I would say, with the alum in the area, which are prime opportunities to meet different members of the community and engage in um, networking to, to get internship opportunities. I personally recruited for digital health, which was a little bit different, um, but perhaps uh, Marissa or Melissa might talk a little bit more about how they recruited for pharmaceutical and for biotech. Um, but there, there is a lot of different opportunities available. And what's really incredible about the Sloan network is that people are so willing to help. Um, there's a phrase, Sloanies helping Sloanies, which I think really is, is accurate. <laughs> it has been so in my case, and I'm sure my colleagues could agree, um, but happy to, to have other people share their experiences as well. 
Yeah, the, um, the club also hosts industry treks. So we have, we, we did two last year and, and we considered a third. It'll depend on interest this year um, where we, we go either around Cambridge. We had one in Cambridge and one in Waltham um, where we have specific companies that have agreed to host us in person. Um, it'll probably look a little different this year. Um, but what that entails is we have 10 or 12 students who are interested, spend the whole day or because if it's in Cambridge, it's an afternoon. And sometimes, you know, we considered um, a trek to San Francisco based on interest. So there can be different opportunities, different companies and locations, but it's nice to be in Cambridge where it can just be, let's go, let's travel to these four companies. They'll do a quick company presentation, let us know their work, and you can meet some of the recruiters or people there. Um, and that's something that we're definitely going to continue even in a, in a virtual world. Excellent. Great. While we're on the topic of careers, Steve, can you touch upon how you recruited and how you made the, the leap to JP Morgan um, and, and what that was like? Uh, yeah, so I think I came to Sloan with the clear idea that I wanted to do something finance related. Um, and, uh, and I knew that the ecosystem at MIT and Cambridge in general would be very appropriate to learn more about healthcare and and the clubs would be very useful in understanding the recruiting opportunities. So in my case, I was part of the healthcare club and part of the investment banking club. And for people interested in finance role, I think it's important to be to have that dual track. So whether it's um, uh, the PE club or the banking club or whatever finance focus club you can join, it's important to do that in addition to the healthcare club. Uh, and building on what Pooja and Marissa said, there's a lot of events that are super useful in terms of networking, meeting people, understanding exactly what roles are out there. In my case, it was mostly you know, alumni uh, that went into banking uh, and second years that did banking over the summer that were really instrumental in helping me get an understanding of uh, what's required to break into the industry. Uh, and banking is very specific. It's, uh, you know, the recruiting starts very early, um, it's fast paced, uh, and there's a lot of networking, a lot of, um, interaction early on in the fall, uh, but that was what I did. So I was learning finance and I was learning more about healthcare, making sure that I know exactly what I want to do, even within healthcare, because in healthcare finance, you have uh, biotech, you have medical devices. And for me, I knew I really like pharma and, and biotech. So for that reason, yeah, the, the healthcare club, the biotech club and the community on campus was super useful for me to understand what's happening in that industry and how does finance play a role in driving the growth and innovation in that industry. Great, excellent. Susie. Um, I guess I just wanna add from a more entrepreneurial and startup exposure side of things, there's a lot of options for hands-on coursework at Sloan where you get to work with some of the burgeoning startups um, and that can also be a way to network um, into a job when you graduate um, uh, and I have seen friends across like LGOs and also fellow Sloanies kind of networking with the engineering school because we are located on the same side of the river as the rest of MIT. So it's, it's a lot of opportunity to get plugged into the greater campus and um, maybe some technical partners for a startup um, to, to grow out of your MIT experience if you're interested in entrepreneurship. Great, and Susie, along that line, um, have you all had any interaction with Greater MIT? You know, whether it's from the certificate, if you're in the certificate, or projects or research where you're working outside of Sloan? And if so, what um, experience has that been like for you? Pooja, yeah. So I had the opportunity to expand beyond just Sloan over IAP last year. So IAP is the one month January portion that technically is um, optional for coursework or people do internships. There's a lot of different variety of, of uh, things that you can do. I chose to take a course and was the TA for a course called Start MIT, which is part of the Entrepreneurship Center at MIT. And it involves students across the entire school from undergraduates to graduate students in every different department. It was an incredible experience because it allowed me to meet people outside of Sloan and it partners students together who have similar interests and you could start your own company, you can pitch ideas and really meet co-founders or technical technical members of your team. Um, it, was a, it was a really great opportunity and expanded the, the possibilities beyond just Sloan. 
Great. Excellent. Melissa, I have a question for you regarding um, wellness and mental health. We have a lot of questions from prospective students about what resources are available for wellness and, and mental health at Sloan and MIT. And I was wondering if you could touch upon your experience. Um, you mean in terms of what Sloan provides or as an interest area that people Both. are looking into? Both. Okay. Um, I mean, in terms of what Sloan provides, there's a lot of resources. I mean, I'm certainly no expert. Um, you know, there are clubs for mindfulness. There's kind of like, I think, a daily meditation or yoga session that you can do. There's all sorts of stuff going on. I mean, particularly during the whole COVID crisis, the mental health facilities at MIT Medical have honestly truly been exceptional. I went through a period where I just stopped sleeping for a week um, and I honestly just got top-notch um, healthcare from a, you know, from a psychiatrist level as well as a therapist. So I think there is a lot here, and I think it's something that MIT takes very seriously. Um, and on that side, it's been really great. On the mental health side, um, in terms of the student group, you know, it was kind of a random group of, I think it was maybe about five of first year uh, MBA students last year that we kind of said, hey, we're really interested in this. Who else specifically cares about what we care about? And there's a there's this WhatsApp group between um, Sloan and HBS, and it's a really great resource where people are sharing companies and articles and ideas and, you know, job opportunities and whatever else. And it's it's been a really, really great community to be a part of. Great, excellent. Um, given your time thus far, you know, your one year or Steve, your two years, what has been your most memorable project or experience within Sloan and healthcare? Susie. Um, I kind of alluded to this in my introduction, but I never thought when I enrolled in uh, a course titled Evaluating a Biomedical Business Concept last fall, that it would lead to um, me signing a consulting agreement with a startup. So Steve was actually on my team for this project and um, the course revolves around um, working in small diverse teams. So people from Sloan, people from MIT undergrad, people from the engineering schools, and you're paired with a startup, um, a local uh, med tech, biotech, healthcare themed startup in the area and you kind of get the opportunity to, to do due diligence and um, help the company work on um, their their startup strategy and so um, the company we worked with was initially struggling with funding um, through the semester that we worked with them but um, our we thought our company had a really good business proposition especially as the gene editing space is expanding and they got a new CEO um, kind of halfway through our, our um, time working with them and I've uh, stayed in touch with her um, and have done a little bit of work on the side and um, now um, I'm getting paid to do it. So that's pretty cool. <laughs> it's been an amazing opportunity and I, yeah. Um, I, I can speak to a, another one as well, uh, which is a pretty unique experience to MIT, which is called the, the study tour program. Um, so MIT sponsors student initiated trips and courses um, annually, three, three courses in the spring, which is a combined curriculum developed by the students um, with faculty and that culminates in a two week trip anywhere in the world to, to support your learning. Um, so this is something that I had learned about when I was in, in your seat just a couple of years ago and started working on in the fall of my first year as an MBA student and with Pooja and a few other of our classmates, we developed a curriculum, recruited faculty to help teach a curriculum and we were really interested in the um, intersection of public and private um, public payers and private industry in countries that have single payer healthcare. So it was an incredible experience getting to develop that curriculum and bringing in lecturers from all over the country and students with similar interests. And then we planned this beautiful two week trip that we haven't been able to take yet because um, of the global pandemic. But I have high hopes that it's going to happen one of these days where we, we were able to connect with um, government agencies, with federal ministries of health in these countries, you know, all because of the support that we had from MIT um, to, to meet with, with those individuals and as a learning experience. So we're hope, hoping to, to get that and, and hopefully you guys starting a little bit later will be on the other side of the pandemic and, and can work in some similar fashion. 
Great, Pooja. Um, so I'll talk about an area that I discovered at MIT and it, a couple of people have asked about analytics in the Q&A and so I'll touch a little bit about that as well because when I started here at MIT, I knew nothing about analytics. I have no background in computer science, really brand new world for me, and I loved it. I thought it was an incredible area that I really wanted to learn more about. Uh, we do have uh, courses in our core curriculum that focus a little bit on analytics and allow you to have a brief exposure. For me, those were really challenging courses given my lack of background in that area, but it opened up a whole world for me. And so I discovered a passion for digital health and, and healthcare analytics and um, ended up taking a few other courses in the area. I took Analytics Edge last semester, which was really hard, but also amazing. And uh, I learned some things about myself. I learned that in the future, I want to be on the forefront of digital healthcare and having um, being able to help improve bias in analytics, specifically in healthcare. And that played a big role in how I decided I wanted to recruit for a summer internship. Um, I found a digital health startup that was really interested in, in helping to create change in healthcare and um, part of my interest in analytics and my interest in the healthcare space and the clinical world all combined together for this summer internship, which uh, it's been it's been really cool so far. Great, excellent. So we have um, a couple questions about, um, maybe Melissa, you wanna talk about this, on how was it getting into healthcare at Sloan without having pre prior experience in the healthcare industry? And what steps did you take to get involved in the space at the school? Sure, I mean, so one of the things they tell you as part of the MBA process is, you know, you can't pivot role industry and location at the same time. You've got to pick one or two of those. Um, so for me, I was very focused. I had 11 years experience in finance, specifically in investor relations and private equity. So I have a quantitative background, financial background, um, and also I'm used to working in contract negotiations and viewing things from, from that kind of commercial perspective. So for me, it was always going to be a case of doing something in business development because that is what my background has. I couldn't have walked in and taken, you know, a very different kind of role that I was in no way qualified for. And, you know, the advice I was given and it still stands today is just present what you are, you know, don't try make yourself out to be something else. You know, for me, uh, no one would look at, say, for instance, me versus Pooja and kind of think, well, these two individuals are going to react the same in a company situation. Um, be upfront about what you have, what's in your skill set, um, and just keep on searching for opportunities. I mean, I actually got offered a role that got rescinded when COVID hit, so that was kind of a, a tough thing for me to go through. But I ended up with frankly, this much better internship that has been really amazing and will sit as, you know, a great, great thing on my resume and I've learned so much. So it's, it's partly positioning and partly, you know, just perseverance, I guess. Great. Excellent. We've talked a lot about biotechs. Um, obviously, we're in the hub of them. What else does Sloan offer outside that space? And maybe some of you can touch upon other courses or activities um, that you've done outside of the biotech side. Yeah, Susie. Um, so I know Sloan and MIT in general is really known to be strong on the quant side, but um, I've done a lot of work or taken some coursework with the Leadership Center at Sloan and have found that to be uh, very impactful in, in my development. Like I, I came back to school to gain a technical skill set, but also to kind of keep improving my emotional intelligence and, and leadership skills. Um, and I feel like I've definitely had had the opportunity to, to do that here. And I encourage people, um, if they do come to Sloan, to really look at the Leadership Center's course offerings, because um, that's been very impactful for me. 
That's great. And along those lines, we're talking about your involvement in healthcare at Sloan, but there's so much else at Sloan that I'm sure you all are involved in. I'd love to know what other activities you are involved in and maybe how you manage your time between the healthcare side and other activities. I can go first. Um, I think uh, some of the people in the chat room have expressed interest in, in entrepreneurship and startups. Uh, and I noticed that a lot of my classmates got some exposure to um, an entrepreneurial journey at some point. In my case, uh, two of my classmates started a company which happens to be in the healthcare space, but they started a company uh, while uh, at Sloan. And it was an amazing experience to work with them and see the startup take off, uh, participate in a couple of you know, startup competitions. Um, and we actually got really involved in the response to the pandemic um, over uh, the spring. Uh, we did a big effort to distribute uh, PPE to uh, doctors and hospitals in, uh, in the Boston area. Um, so that was really interesting. It was a great way to apply the knowledge in the classroom to apply to a real world problem, whether it's logistics, um, sales. So I really practiced my sales pitches uh, through that startup. Uh, multiple times, um, and that was really uplifting. It was a big highlight of my, my time at Sloan, uh, especially when we, we actually won a, a competition at the end of the year, 100K competition. So in terms of you know, building a relationship with classmates, um, with, uh, with professionals, practitioners in, in the field, uh, applying the skills that you learn in the classroom to an actual problem, uh, getting a better understanding of a specific industry, all that can be really experienced at a pretty fast pace if you work on a startup. And I've many classmates who did that, uh, who either started one or worked with one. So that's something to keep in mind. Even if you don't want to work in, you know, for a startup or start a company, uh, keep that on your radar. It's really important to, uh, to get an exposure if you can. Great. Um, Susie, I do have a question for you, being on the LGO side. How do you kind of manage the MBA, healthcare, and engineering coursework at the same time? So I think one of the most important things that uh, a business school experience teaches you is how to prioritize. So um, I spent kind of a fair amount of time, even before starting the program, thinking about, okay, like, what do I want to get out of this? And if, you know, this list is kind of too big to tackle during my two years and keeping my sanity, like what am I comfortable with maybe letting go from this list? So kind of coming in with a set of what my priorities were was, was helpful. Um, and then also to being open to kind of reprioritize as, as new and unexpected opportunities, um, you know, came my way. So uh, that's, that's my advice there. Um, yeah. Great, excellent. So we also have some questions on the Q&A about the healthcare certificate. Are any of you involved in the certificate? You can shake your head. Okay, Marissa and Susie. Can you talk a little bit more about the certificate and maybe some things that aren't on the website? Maybe, you know, the size, the classes, the experience so far and why you decided to get involved in the certificate? Sure. Um, so I figured I'm really interested in healthcare. I'm going to be taking these classes anyway. Might as well sign up for the certificate. Um, some of the things that you might not see on the website is signing up helps you um, get notified when, when faculty or industry speakers are in. There's a listserv that's really nice to be a part of. One of the things that's also really nice is that it's flexible. You know, if you start to work through the class and you realize maybe you want to focus your time on something else, that's okay. Maybe you don't have to finish the certificate. And then another piece of information I found really interesting during my initial networking and recruitment was how do employers view the certificate? Um, and a lot of them said that it's just another thing on your resume. So for someone like Pooja, who is an MD, has been working in the space, it's very clear where her skill set is. Maybe it's not as important to also have the certificate, but for someone coming from a completely different background who really wants to signal I chose to focus my time and my MBA on this industry it could it could show that extra weight to a future employer I don't know if you have anything to add Susie yeah kind of in that same vein because I didn't have um, work experience in, in med tech or biotech before 
uh, Sloan, I wanted to use that to kind of compensate for that and, and express my interest. Um, and I also want to add that there is some flexibility in the certificate uh, for people who may be considering LGO because you do miss a, sem a semester, which can make it a little bit challenging to complete, but the, the faculty is willing to work with you to come up with a way to, to meet those requirements if, if you can't actually take, you know, all the, all the required classes listed. Great, excellent. So, um, Steve, I know you talked about your experience getting into um, finance and JP Morgan. Um, maybe you all could talk about being part of the healthcare club and working with other clubs at Sloan and maybe how you all bridge together, maybe to get into learning about um, investing and finance in the healthcare space or so on and so forth. Just maybe some collaboration among different clubs um, from the healthcare club side. Oh. oh, go ahead, Steve. Uh, I can talk a little bit about it. I'm also uh, a member of the VCPE club, and I have no background in that at all. And, and maybe some of my colleagues on the screen can talk a little bit more about, about that space as well. But it's an area I'm interested in, and I wanted to learn more about it. So I'm using the club as an opportunity to get invited to different events. I think one of the biggest things that I've learned about Sloan is that there's always something to do. There's always an event. There's always something that is going on in the evenings or during lunch hour, and it can be really hard to prioritize which event you want to go to. And for me, it, it started to, I had to make a list essentially of the things that I wanted to learn, the things I wanted to get out of the Sloan experience. And so sometimes that meant actually skipping out on a healthcare event because there was a really interesting sounding VC or PE event that I know nothing about and it might be a good opportunity to sit in on a, on a session to hear just these terms that people use on a regular basis that might be brand new to me and so uh it it ultimately my interests are, are still combined i'm interested in the entrepreneurship space along with healthcare but you can do so in a way that combines the worlds and the clubs are a really great way to make that happen susie is your hand up or is that still up Nope. Okay, great. So we obviously have a lot of questions about COVID. Um, and I know many of you were in your first year and Steve, you're about to graduate. Um, could you potentially talk about your experience within the healthcare space, given COVID and, you know, staying connected with one another and staying on track and maybe additional classes or resources um, on, on the topic of COVID? I just want to bring attention to this slide um, that we like to showcase right now on some faculty um, classes and research that's going on. Um, so if you want to all take a minute to just read through the slide, I know Pooja has some experience um, with the Alliance and maybe with some other, there's been a ton of hackathons. I participated in the fall hackathon and what the fall will look like for our students in a remote setting or a hybrid setting or just all back on campus. So maybe you all could talk about if you have experience thus far about this slide or again, other experiences about your semester, um, your remote semester. Um, I can start. So I think when, when March hit last year, it was a big shock to everyone. Uh, I remember just essentially feeling that the world shut down. Um, we were, it was right before Sloan's spring break. And so there was so much uncertainty. I think that was, and that's been the difficulty all along. It's just the, the idea of uncertainty and the unknown and, and not really knowing what the future is going to hold. And right around that time, everybody was in quarantine and we were all sort of figuring out our way when we got this message from a group of colleagues who had decided to launch the first ever COVID hackathon, uh, and they were going to be all virtual. And I remember being just really shocked at the motivation and drive for individuals in my class when I myself was just struggling to, you know, eat, sleep, and like basically get out of bed every day with everything else going on. And it was really cool to see. And they were able to pull off the 
biggest virtual hackathon that ever existed. And I was fortunate to play a role. I was one of the advisors for teams and it took place over a weekend. And it was just really, again, incredible to see how many people came, came to, to register. It was thousands of individuals from all over the world and different time zones. And, and we're really working together to make a difference. And they followed it up with the Africa hackathon, which you can see here on the screen. Uh, and it's, it just goes to show that you know, people can make the most out of a really difficult time and actually come together to, to make like a meaningful impact on the world. And it was just, it's really cool to be a part of it. Yes, Marissa. Yeah, so uh, and another way that COVID sort of impacted our learning, I'm, I'm TAing for the healthcare economics class this year, which I took last year. And the professor reached out to me pretty quickly, you know, when this was all happening to say, well, what can we, I guess I should give you some background. So the course gives you some background on, on basics of economics and healthcare, but most of it is industry experts coming in from different areas to speak about their um, experiences and how um, that interacts with, with the basics that we learned about earlier in the course. And so the professor reached out to me to help brainstorm. Well, now that we have this virtual setup, who else can we bring in for speakers? And we're thinking about people who live on the other side of the world. Some of the contacts I made from that, that study tour I mentioned earlier in Germany and um, you know, industry CEOs who can't spare a whole day to fly out and speak to the class, but can maybe spare an hour to jump on Zoom. So it's, it's really opening the opportunities for a course like that. And I'm sure there are many other courses. I know Pooja's TAing, one of the other ones, a focus like that where, um, where you can you can really bring in more experts and more folks because of the virtual opportunity. You're on mute, Anne. Yep. Got it. Thank you. Um, another question that we talked about um, earlier was your decision to come to Sloan. Maybe um, if you have any other information, I see on the Q and A a lot of questions about. Um, how you think Sloan has done in sort of preparing you to think about what's next. I know Melissa and Susie both said, I'm not sure yet, um, but is there any specific classes or steps that have kind of helped you gain insight into what you want to do next that you didn't think you potentially would be in um, when you started at Sloan? I would reference the class that uh, Susie, Susie uh, mentioned, uh, evaluating a biomedical concept. Um, very interesting class. I think many people come to Sloan, you know, thinking about healthcare from a, um, maybe from the perspective of pharma or maybe healthcare tech, but not necessarily medical devices. And, and that class is really honing down on medical devices. What's the process to create one, to get the approvals, uh, to find the right market, um, and to create value both for the investors and for, for the patients. And throughout that class, I realized this is a really fascinating, you know, area of healthcare that I never really uh, considered. And, and now it's on my radar. So I would mention, I would definitely mention that. Uh, there are other classes, obviously, depending on, you know, where you're coming from and what are your interests, you can get exposure to different sides of healthcare and realize there's a lot more to learn and a lot more to do than you might have thought before coming to school. I'm going to Steve, um, kind of pick on you a little bit and feel free not to answer, but maybe share how your experience was, you know, graduating um, in a remote setting and, and what that experience was like for you. Uh, it was, it was definitely awkward, uh, as you can all imagine. Uh, I would say there were a couple of highlights, uh, despite the pandemic, despite taking classes remotely and graduating on Zoom, uh, a couple of highlights in the months uh, before the graduation were first, the response to the pandemic. So, Pooja mentioned, for example, all the hackathons, you mentioned yourself, you participated in one. But seeing the response to the pandemic made me feel so excited to be part of this community. Uh, and it kind of alleviated the, you know, the, the, the pain or the frustration of, you know, finishing or wrapping up my education in this setting. So, whether it's students or faculty, all the talks we had, I, it was really fun to see people talk about Moderna on TV when we had a couple of private presentations um, with Tefan Dancel on uh, what Moderna is working on and having the, the feeling that we are kind of on the forefront on what's happening in terms of innovation in healthcare, in uh, finding a vaccine 
uh, for COVID. So all that made me feel very excited to be part of this community that's doing something. And also on the startup front, I was working with a startup, working hard to help uh, you know, doctors and, and medical providers uh, with PPE. So that was a great thing. You know, being part of those initiatives and seeing that response was amazing. And, and secondly, uh, seeing that overall, uh, the school has been really helpful in helping students, um, you know, weather the storm, uh, the response I think has been pretty good overall. Um, it really alleviated that, that burden. So yes, it was a bit frustrating to graduate online. Yes, it was a bit frustrating not to see all my classmates and have all the, the fun far around graduation. But again, the context, the response, the way we handle it, made me super proud to be an MIT uh, graduate student. That's great. That's wonderful to hear. Um, I do have a question a little bit about, you know, along the lines of you getting involved with um, startups and maybe you all can talk about faculty engagement and interaction with faculty. If you're doing any research with faculty or there's, we talked a little bit about, Steve, you mentioned and, and Susie about favorite classes, but um, faculty research or any other research you're doing across MIT. Someone wants to talk about that. Or maybe a favorite faculty member or another favorite class. I guess I'm trying to help our uh, audience learn a little bit more about your interaction with faculty on a day-to-day -ba -day basis. And then also on another kind of side is also your alumni engagement. Were you able to connect with alums in the healthcare space? What was that experience like? So I'll throw both of those questions at, at you. I can take it. Oh, go ahead, Susie. You go. I was going to say, so um, part of the way that I'm uh, finagling doing the healthcare certificate with missing a semester is I was able to do an independent study um, to kind of compensate for one of the courses that I would, I would be missing um, from missing, I guess, this coming fall. And the faculty was very willing to work with me and help guide my study. Um, so I, I worked with, I guess, Thomas Romer, who's on the operations side, as well as Professor Joseph Doyle, who's um, the health econ professor. Uh, he was very helpful in, in, in shaping, shaping up my research. Um, yeah. I'm glad you went first because I just discovered today that I could do an independent study for a class I wanted to skip or I, that I can't fit into my schedule essentially uh, this fall. And so I'm, I just learned all about it this morning and I'm really excited to find the professor and, and pick a project to work on for an independent study. Um, but I can talk a little bit about engaging with alum. I think uh, for me in particular, that's the reason I ended up at Sloan. I met an alum at uh, the Sloan Healthcare Conference, which is an annual conference that takes place in the spring. And I had attended a couple years before I made the decision to apply to Sloan or, and then again, during the application process. And I connected with uh, an alum of the executive program who is also in healthcare. And we, we've been maintaining communication ever since. Uh, it was for me, one of the first times in my life I had ever met somebody who had a similar interest in doing good in healthcare in a way that was actually meaningful and, and different. And it was one of the first times that when I told somebody that I wanted to leave my full-time career as an ER physician to go back to business school full-time, he basically said, yeah, makes total sense. I'm totally stand by you. And that was a really cool and, and of course an amazing experience. And we still communicate to this day. I had a call with him last week um, about career opportunities and how to approach different offers, how to get offers. Uh, and it's been, it's been really amazing. And I think that this is like a lifelong mentor. So the Sloan community is amazing. Great, excellent. Have any of you had experience with global healthcare, you know, working um, in other countries or maybe classes or, or labs or, um, and if not, have you taken any other action learning labs um, that have an international focus? Um, I did, uh, I did uh, two action learning, I did China Lab and G Lab. Um, none of my projects um, was focused on healthcare, but you know, they are healthcare focused projects. Um, so China Lab, uh, I work for 
a company doing artificial intelligence um, in, in China, obviously, and G Lab, I was in Peru uh, working for an incubator, um, helping them to define a business model to be sustainable. Great. Anyone else take a lab yet? I know you're only there your first year, so no labs yet. Um, I don't know if course bidding has happened yet. Has course bidding happened yet for the fall? No, not yet. Okay. So um, some of the other questions that maybe are not healthcare related, which I know are always hot topics when we do any sort of admissions event. Um, we talked about your favorite healthcare experience, but maybe you can mention another favorite thing uh, that you've done at Sloan, whether it's a class or maybe a social activity. Um, it's always fun to hear what you all are doing outside of the classroom as well. Go ahead, Marissa. Yeah, so um, I found the, the pre-function, which is a trip organized by second years that um, they do in, right before the fall semester starts to be my favorite, one of my favorite memories at Sloan um, for a couple of reasons. One is because you don't know anybody yet or you know might know a few people from admit weekends or whatnot, but for the most part, you don't know your classmates yet and yet you agree to go on a trip with them for a weekend or, or a week and um, to either a foreign country or a new city or some crazy activity like whitewater rafting. Um, and it really helps you get to know other people because there's specific communities at Sloan. You'll find, you know, there's the healthcare community where we're taking the same classes or going to the same events. There's your ocean, your cohort, but a pre-function or a thing like that helps build different communities from across all of those subsets. And so it helps you get to know more people across your class and, and really diversify based on an interest area or a new country you want to explore. Excellent. Uh, Melissa. Yeah, so my one is is really the the cohort ocean experience at Sloan. It was something that in advance, if you'd asked me, I would have said, I'm not particularly interested in a core uh, semester. And, you know, I why am I doing this? I've done, you know, economics, accounting, statistics before. What is the point of this? And honestly, I was so, so wrong you know you get so baked in with your community during that course semester and you just meet so many people and they're from all over and they've got different opinions and different career experience and and the ocean it is have possibly you know the best part of the Sloan experience for me you have a group of you know 70 or maybe a different number in future years 70 ready-made friends that everyone was throwing a party or doing something uh, and they become your community in a way that if I'd been let out into the wild to just choose my own courses and go my own way, I would probably have, you know, 20% of the friends that I do now. So it's, it's a really important part for me. That's great. Anyone else want to share their favorite Sloan experience or MIT experience? Uh, I could talk a bit about the ski trip. Uh, I, personally was really hesitant to go on the ski trip. I'm not a big skier. Um, I knew a lot of my classmates were really hardcore about skiing and I was a bit concerned about what the week would look like, uh, but it was amazing. Uh, I didn't necessarily have to ski. I actually did a day of downhill skiing. I did a day of cross country skiing and I did a day of ice climbing, all which to say it was amazing. It was a chance to just get together with your your class with your friends outside of Sloan, outside of Cambridge, and I loved it. Uh, I thought it was really fun. I highly encourage all of you to consider it if if we're able to do so this year. And Pooja, was that organized by a student club? And if so, which yeah. one? It was organized by the Ski and Snowboard Club at Sloan, and about 400 students went, which is essentially half the student body at Sloan. So it's it's a big club and a very big event. Anyone else? So I, I did the ski trip, not this year, but last year, and I agree with what Pooja said. It's fantastic. I also want to mention that at Sloan, we have multiple opportunities to do retreats. Uh, so we did one with the healthcare club, but I did other retreats with other clubs, and those are amazing. It's, you know, it's like a weekend getaway. Uh, we do get opportunity to really get to know people and to build um, strong ties with people. So, you know, don't miss the opportunity to do those retreats. Uh, whether it's something organized by the club or something more informal. Um, I, I think those were some of the highlights and obviously the labs. I think 
probably the, the biggest highlights by the labs. Uh, I strongly recommend the labs. And then all those short trips with your classmates are, are fantastic. Great, excellent. So I just, oh, M Melissa, are you about to say something? No, no, okay, good. Well, any final thoughts from our panelists as we wrap up? Can do the little hand raise if so. Great, so, oh yes, Melissa. Yeah, so I just wanted to make a point, um, particularly for those who are relatively new to the healthcare sector, spend as much time as you can thinking about what you really care about. What is the area? I mean, a lot of it will be, oh, where can I work? Where do I fit in? But healthcare is huge. There are so many different facets, so many different areas and models that you can go into. So really spend your time understanding what it is you care about. Maybe it's a disease area or something like that. Um, and research it because if you can hit the ground running here, you're just going to get that much more out of the whole experience. That's excellent. Thank you. Susie. I guess for me, I've been very much, I mean, I knew I would get a lot of opportunity coming to Sloan, but, um, you know, kind of going back to where I want to take my career from here, part of the reason I'm undecided is just because of the sheer number of opportunities um that there are so i want to take the time to consider all of them and, and make the right choice so um i think you know even though i went in thinking that i had my priorities all set that they have changed on me um and i've been really um happy with with the amount of different options that i have um moving forward in my career great and susie can you remind us what engineering department you're in for lgo I'm in uh, civil engineering. Great, thank you. So I just wanna bring um, attention to, um, let me see if I can go back to it. Upcoming events. This is where we're having a couple more um, of our student experience webinars. Uh, the next one is campus engagement at MIT in Sloan. And that's basically a, a webinar to showcase how we get outside of Sloan and how we use the MIT resources and the MIT community while you're at Sloan. And then our final one for the summer is Tuesday, August 18th on social impact and sustainability at MIT. Um, I want to thank you all and especially our panelists and thank you all again for joining us. Um, we hope that you stay well, stay healthy, and that we will see you on many of our future our events. The application deadlines for MBA were released last week, so definitely go onto our website to check that out. And feel free always to email us, give us a call if you have any questions. And again, enjoy your afternoon or morning or evening from wherever you are joining us. And thank you again to our panelists. Have a good one.